Today, we're finishing Project S10K by showing you how to fix rusty spots without a welder. Then we'll prep it for the paint booth and shoot it some cool color. It's all here today on Trucks. Welcome to Trucks. Hey guys, if you remember, we put a $10,000 budget on our S10K project. The good news is, we're on the home stretch. And we've got this thing breathing fire with its new GM Performance Crate 350 engine. So far, we've spent $7,710, and that has bought us a 320 horse 4 bolt main small block, a TBI induction, a set of headers a shift kit, and a torque converter to handle the power of our new V8. We also got a 2-4 drop kit to get the stance that we were after. And the 17-inch wheels and tires really set off the whole look. The cow hood, along with the twin 12-inch pusher fans, will keep her cool on the road. And the new exhaust makes it sound like a real muscle truck. Now that we've got our S10K running like a champ, it's time to make it look like one. Now. With the cost of the truck, we've got 1300 bucks left over. Yeah, because a paint job alone can run into tens of thousands of dollars for a high-end restoration job. Heck, the tools alone for body work can totally wipe out the whole budget we've set aside for our S10. A good welder starts at about 800 bucks. But what if I told you guys that we can show you a way to fix those rusty cab corners for about 150 bucks? That's materials, patch panels, everything. And you don't have to buy a welder. And you can do this in your driveway. If you think that sounds too good to be true, get a pen and paper and take some notes. Now these cab corners are rotten, which is pretty common in trucks. And over the years, I've seen some seriously cheesy repairs happen. I'm talking about newspaper and steel wool stuffed up in the hole and then the whole mess mudded over. But we're not going to cheese out here, and you shouldn't cheese out at home. So here's the plan. Today we're using panel bonding adhesive. This stuff's got a 3,700 pound tensile strength. Now, that's about as strong as a weld, only with a lot more consistency. A good welder will run you about 800 bucks. This adhesive, about 30 bucks. Now, this stuff's not new. Matter of fact, it's been around for a long time. And a lot of your professional body shops, they use it. But you can't just slap your patch over top of the rust. Whether you're gluing or welding, there's some simple rules that you gotta follow. First things first, you have to determine where the rust stops. So we'll grind the surface to bare steel. Mark out where your patch will be, then cut it with a cutoff wheel. Cut at least an inch past where you find solid metal and cut carefully because you're making a template. Transfer the template to the patch panel, then trace it out. Carefully cut it out of your panel because you don't want to ruin the surrounding metal. I'll show you why in a minute. Trim your piece so you got about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Good. We got a nice fit, but we're gluing this in. There's nothing for it to stick to. Tell them what to do, Paul. You're going to want to go back to the patch panel and measure an inch outside your cutout. And then you want to carefully cut those pieces out. These are what's going to keep your patch in place. There you go. Thanks. That's right, Paul's just fabricated these backing plates that will give our patch something to sit on and the glue something to stick to. Now this allows us to create what's known in the welding world as a butt joint or butt weld. And this is usually tons harder to create than this was right here. Here, let me go rough those up. All right. The adhesive we're using really needs some tooth to bite into. So we're using 50 grit sandpaper to grind down the pieces, make sure we get a good strong bond. This part of the repair has to be prepped just like the backing panels. So I took a fiber wheel, ran it on the inside, followed it with 40 grit by hand, give it that nice tooth that we need. Now a way to check that is with a flashlight and an inspection mirror, you can just go all the way around and see what you've done, make sure it's prepped right. One last bit of work to do is we want to bevel this edge so the burr or the sharp metal edge doesn't show through your primer and your filler. A huge advantage to using adhesive bonding 
is that it comes in several different dry times. I'm talking from 30 seconds all the way up to over an hour. And that should give you plenty of time to set your patch. There you go. Thank you. We're using a one minute set time for our repair here. Now one thing you want to make sure and do is set your panel clamps to where they've got the right amount of tension. You don't want too much tension because it could force the adhesive out from between the two panels and sacrifice your bond strength. I'll run a 3 8 inch wide bead along the part to be glued. Use a throwaway brush to spread it evenly, then clamp it into place, leaving a half inch overlap for the patch to sit on. Then just do the same all the way around. Let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then get rid of the excess with a fiber wheel or a grinder. And then you're ready for the patch. You can use sheet metal screws or magnets to hold things steady while the glue kicks. And again, don't worry about the excess that's going to get squeezed out of the edges. There's going to be plenty of time to deal with that. Cool. We'll let that set up a little while. About enough time for us to take a break. Yeah. And when we get back from break, we're going to show you guys how to fix those patches and get that thing under primer without a spray gun or a compressor. You're not going to want to miss it. After the break, we'll smooth our patch down and use a primer that really is easy to apply. Hey, welcome back. We're doing low buck rust repair that you can do at home. And we're one step closer to transforming this boring ass pen into an awesome looking street machine. Yeah, now that we've got the rust taken care of in our cab corners, it's time to get her to look as good as her newfound power. All we gotta do is seal it up and throw some primer on it. The panel glue's had plenty of time to sit, now we gotta grind this out of the seam. You don't wanna use fillers over the excess glue. It won't stick anywhere. And it'll probably show through your repairs. Just grind it out with a stripping disc or a sander. Next, we will use some fiberglass filler to fill in the seam we've created. First, we have to prep the whole surface with 50 grit to give it the proper tooth it needs. Tooth means deep scratches for your filler to grab onto. Without it, your filler could just fall out. I'm using a ribbon of hardener over my filler. This is a safe way to get enough catalyst in the mix without getting too much. Now we'll let that dry, which should take about 10 minutes. After that, I use 80 grit paper on a hand block to level it out. Polyester filler is much finer than the fiberglass and will give us a smooth, level surface to prime and block for paint. Bondo gets a bad rap sometimes, but when you use it properly and no more than a quarter inch thick, it'll last the life of the vehicle, and probably a lot more. Taking your time on the metal work makes all these steps a lot easier. This filler is really finishing putty and sets up quick. You can feel it and tell if it's ready to sand by using a little pressure with the fingernail. When it feels solid, it'll probably powder nicely when you block it down. I'll start with 80 grit and just shape the top. We got everything to prep and paint our truck from our good friends at Auto Body Color and Supply, and it only costs us about 350 bucks. We'll use a little powdered guide coat to see our high and low spots. Then switch to 180 grit to finish blocking for primer. Now it's prime time. Normally you'd mask up the truck, suit up, and spray the primer on. But this, you just roll it on. This is PPG's SX1060 Rollable Primer. It's easy to use, but don't be a mad scientist. Use the recommended ratio of four parts primer to one part hardener, then blend together. This is not just a metal coating. This is a primer surfacer, which is designed to be sanded and leveled after it dries. Most spray primers will end up at about four to six millimeters thick after three or four coats. This stuff is no different. All right, this primer takes a few hours to dry in the open air, but 10 minutes if you've got one of these infrared cure lamps. So while you guys take a break, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the body work and get this ready for the paint job. Oh yeah, that looks good. When we come back, we're sanding down the truck, wrapping it up and sneaking into Muscle Cars paint booth.
Hey, welcome back, where we are so close to throwing some color on our S10K. Now, if you're just joining us so far today, we've done some low buck rust repair, we've primered the bodywork without using the spray gun, and now we're ready to prep it, paint it, and put it all back together. That's right. So now we can finish these panels, which starts with blocking the primer. That's the last stage of your bodywork, and it gives you one more chance to check your work. You want to choose a block that fits your panel and the size of your repair. This DuraBlock is going to be just about perfect. Now, Paul's been using a dry guide coat that's going to show me where the high and low spots are. It gets sanded off the high spots and stays in the low spots and will reveal any deep scratches that might have gotten left behind. Now, I'm using 220 grit here, which is aggressive enough to level my primer surface around, but it's not so aggressive that I'm going to have to reprime to sand for final paint. Kev's using a cross blocking technique or an X pattern to evenly block the panels. You don't want to use too much pressure here, just let the sandpaper do the work. And once your guide coat's gone, you're ready to move on to the next step. Then clean your truck with a wax and grease remover, because after an engine swap like ours, you don't want to contaminate your paint by leaving engine fluids on the sheet metal. We're going to scuff the finish so we can paint the truck from the belt line down. Now we can finally start finishing the sanding process. I'm using 600 grit paper on a DA sander, and I'm just hitting the flat spots. With the flat parts of the panel sanded with 600, now we're going to use a scuffing pad inside this crevice. You don't want to use a DA because it's flat and it can't conform. These, you can bend them around and put them inside the gullies and the gaps. Now we're not painting the whole truck. We've set all along our paints in decent shape, but we got to cover up our primer spots. So we're going to save a little cash by two-toning it here at the belt line. Now what I'm using here is 1500, and that's going to give me enough tooth for my paint to stick, but it's going to leave me some freedom to lay my line wherever I want to and have a little fun with it. All right, now that we've wiped it all down again, got all the dust off, it's time to mask it up. We've seen a lot of these S10 split at the belt line, and it looks good, but we're gonna go a little further, and Kev's gonna do something really cool. We waited till Lou and the guys left the muscle car shop, then we snuck into their booth to shoot our truck. You wanna choose your colors before you get to the paint booth. I did a spray out of silver and pewter. Both colors will look good, but we're gonna stay with the silver, because it's gonna match our wheels real well. My first coat is a clear base coat. This will act as a sealer and fill in any scratches that might show through the color. After about five minutes of flash time, we're ready for color. Watch Kevin's technique. He's using a 50% overlap on each pass down the truck. This makes sure that the metallic color is even and streak free. This color would take about three coats to cover completely. And then I'll lay down some color on our cowl hood. After the break, it's the final touches on our budget street truck project. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. We're so close to the finish line, I can taste it. So now we've got a few details to take care of and rub out the paint. Yeah, and then it's time to put the final touches on our S10K project. The rest of our body panels come from LMC Truck. These are affordable bolt-ons that make a dramatic difference in the look of our S10. Like our hood, these are also nice enough to scuff and shoot and fit in place just like the original parts. And our roll pan from LMC is actually a GM factory stamped panel. Even the screw holes line up. This two-tone paint looks awesome, but there's still something missing. That's right, what Paul's talking about is an accent stripe between our two colors. That's pretty common on a custom paint job. And what you usually do is pay a guy several hundred dollars to come out and pull lines on your paint job. But this roll of pinstripe tape, about 12 bucks, but you gotta use it right. Pull enough striping so that you don't have to hold the roll while you're working. Then, stick the end of your stripe to the edge of the panel and pull off enough paper backing to stripe the whole panel. Gently stretching the tape, 
will give it tension and ensure that your line is straight. Once you're comfortable, Five stripes of quarter inch fine line tape and removing every other square before we sprayed it. I'll just use the black tape as an accent. With the exterior done, we're going to spend a few bucks on the inside. And with these stainless steel inserts, it's really going to set things off in here. We got these trim pieces from LMC Truck where we also got these cool billet pedal covers. Got it all done inside. We're gonna let this paint dry for a couple of days and after next week's show, we're gonna do exactly what you guys always ask us to do. That's right. We're gonna run this thing through the mill and that'll be the payoff for our Project S10K. You don't wanna miss it. I'm not gonna miss it. Check it out. This is Bang's six gun diesel tuner. It has six power levels and can add up to an extra 128 horses and up to 345 more pound-feet of torque to your diesel. If you want to go to the next level, you can actually use a power PDA as your six guns in cab interface. Using bank software, you can use the PDA to switch between the different power levels. It can also clear trouble codes and recalibrate for oversized tires. The six gun is going to run you a little over a thousand bucks. The power PDA, around 250. Cool Tools has come up with a great system that takes all the pain out of attaching AN fittings to braided stainless lines. Truly simple. You pop your fitting in to the box, mount it in the vise, lube the end, and then just twist it into place. And what you end up with is the finished product. All you do is thread the rest of the fitting in and you're done. It's that simple. These come in all the popular sizes and a set of threes starts at about 70 bucks. Thanks for watching trucks.